Hello everyone, Quest Quenchers here. Today I am doing a deep analysis of Starfield's direct gameplay. This is going to be a long video, as we will be pausing to look at details, including the menus as well as equipment and UI. So, without further delay, let's get into it. The first gameplay we get of Starfield is the player character exploring the world Aquila. We see the HUD that has a location icon on it, indicating that there is a structure close we can see some sort of predator running in the background. The camera pans over to a mountain, and we can see a planet in the distance. It is confirmed we can travel there. We then cut to a moon-looking area. We see new icons on the little compass. These symbols mean radiation and thermal environmental threats. This planet or moon is called al Batani 5 a Then we cut to a planet called Charibois 5. This planet has a high thermal hazard as well as radiation. Notice how the icons have switched. So this must indicate that the thermal or heat hazard is higher than the radiation. We see a lush, dense forest planet named Algarab 3b. This world is corrosive. We also see a figure in the distance. This could be a person or a plant of some kind. Next, we see a hot desert world named Cassiopeia 4-a. This world is corrosive and radiated. We see enemy pings on the compass too. We see a flying creature which could be hostile. Then we cut to the planet Freya 9-B. This planet has thermal and radiation environmental damage. There is a location nearby as well as another one in the distance. We also see an icon, a triangle with a pill looking shape in it. This may be a buff or a debuff such as a rad resistance consumable. We can see some strange looking bug creatures. We then cut to Groombridge 8A. This planet is radioactive. We seem to have a quest icon here or some sort of point of interest. Also to our left is some sort of place to discover. We see a variety of fauna and flora here. At least three creatures present in this shot. In the next shot we are on Surma 1. There are a few icons we can see. I believe the top one is indicating some sort of alien artifact. And the bottom one may be some place we have captured or our base of operations. This planet has a thermal environment hazard. I just wanted to note that the health and gun bars are looking clear and well presented. This place looks amazing. We then jump to Alchuba 10b. This planet has an environmental hazard. The armor stats later say this environmental hazard is airborne. Yet I don't know what this means. Maybe it means the gravity is not that great so it's easy to fly. We then cut to different planet shots. One shot shows a very odd creature next to a bustling city as a spacecraft lands. We then see a massive archway structure that mirrors our earthly St. Louis monument. This could mean that Earth is now barren. We then see the player back on Parima 4C. This planet has a radiation environmental hazard. We see a few creatures minding their own business. The player then begins to sprint away. We then see the player use a scanner. We get to see that the survey of this planet is already 44% completed, yet we've scanned zero fauna, flora and resources. It also reveals the temperature, oxygen levels as well as gravity. We can scan, create an outpost, pull up the surface map, go into photo mode, or go back. Our scanner highlights things to be scanned as well as locations we can investigate. The player discovers an abandoned mine, then uses their laser to collect some resources. Iron is added to the inventory. There is a cut on approaching the mine. We see the player has equipped a different weapon from their laser cutter. As the player gets closer, the compass turns red indicating hostiles. Red pings appear on it. The player gets attacked by spacers. I notice the radiation icon disappears. Maybe certain areas of the planet are more habitable than other parts. The spacer punk has three health bars. When the player gets them to low health, their armor reappears, although our weaponry still mows the poor guy down in seconds. We get 25 experience from this kill. We can see the player has 5 grenades to hand. The player then jumps very high as the gravity is low on this planet, and quickly ends another spacer's life. It's good to see the reloading animation for this weapon has been fixed, as the previous footage we saw was the ammo cartridge clipping with the weapon. As we can see, this spacer's body goes flying up, like I said, very low gravity. The player uses their jetpack to stay in the air longer. A new bar for the jetpack appears, showing how much you have left. 
The player then switches to the pistol to finish off their attacker. It's good to see enemies using a variety of weapons. One spacer was using a ballistic weapon, and others were using lasers. The reactions of the enemies being shot is very cool to see, giving weight to the bullets. The last spacer's jetpack malfunctioned and sent them flying into the roof in a blaze. We then see the perk ballistics inform us that we have killed 5 out of 20 enemies. This reiterates what we have been told so far about perks, that the more you use them, the better the perk gets. We then get a look at the loot screen, much like Fallout 4 it is a quick look screen. Unfortunately we cannot take the clothing of this spacer, usually you can in Bethesda Games Studios titles, but this time we can't. We see the spacer was carrying some credits, ammo and some items. The player can pick up many objects from the world. Here we see 7.77mm caseless being picked up. To me this doesn't sound like ammo, but more of a component for ammo crafting. The player also picks up a bunch of food items. We then get to see the main menu we will be spending time in. Top left we can see the planet we are on, including its local time and the amount of surveying we have done. Bottom left we can see the ship we have, named the Frontier. We can see it is a Class A ship, with two crew members, how far it can jump as well as its hull integrity. In the middle we can see our character, their level, health and their current quest, further into the unknown, go to Piazzi 7B, we can go into our mission logs if we select this. Top right we can see our skills, it is currently showing lasers, it shows our certification in said skill, as well as how many skills points we have available. Then bottom right we have our gun we have equipped as well as how much we are carrying, this is the inventory section. From here we can select each section which would take us further into those menus, but we can press a few buttons to get our system up, our stats, we can set a course or go back to playing. The player highlights each area before going into their inventory. Here we can see all the inventory options, we see weapons, spacesuits, packs, helmets, apparel, throwables, aid, and an option to show everything. On the right we can see an overview of the current weapon we have equipped. We see the refined Eon does 49 physical damage, the ammo type, mag size, rounds, fire rate, range, accuracy, mass, value, and mods equipped to it. Once the player enters the weapon section, we have options to compare equipped, inspect, sort, favourite, drop and exit. We can also see our credits and mass on this page. On the left we can see the name and damage the gun has. We can see six weapons, the advanced Grendel, a cutter, a mag shear, a modified calibrated razorback, a modified calibrated tombstone, the current weapon we have equipped marked with a white triangle in the top left corner, the refined Eon. It is also favourited with a heart icon. We also see the refined Equinox, and the specialised calibrated Beowulf. You can rotate each weapon to get a good look at it. We then see the spacesuit section. On the right, we can see the name of the suit. Its physical resistance, the energy defence, the last defence isn't quite clear of what it's defending against, but as a guess it's electromagnetic defence. We then see the environmental defences, we can see the thermal resistance, airborne resistance, corrosive defence, and radiation defence. We also see its mass and value. We have a few options in this menu too, we can hide spacesuits in settlements. Compare to equipped, inspect, sort, favourite, drop and go back. Each spacesuit has unique stats, so having a variety of spacesuits is a good idea, especially when exploring multiple planets. On the left we can see the name of the spacesuit as well as its damage resistance. The player has a constellation spacesuit, an explorer spacesuit, a mercenary spacesuit, and a navigator spacesuit. I just want to say each of the weapons and spacesuits look amazing. Unfortunately it looks like we cannot mod our spacesuit, as there are no mods attached value although we don't know if we can improve our armour either. We then have a quick cut to the helmet section. This has the same options and stats as the spacesuit section. The helmets we have are the Constellation Space Helmet, Explorer's Space Helmet, and the Navigator Space Helmet. In the aid section we can see the item and the mass on the left and on the right, its effects. Most items heal the player, some damage the player, but add a more oxygen to the player. The player then returns to their ship, the radiation icon has reappeared. I believe the ship icon is a sharp looking triangle or arrow icon. 
We can also see the direction of north on the planet, just so players can orientate themselves. We then open the hatch to the ship. To me, this looks like a loading screen into the ship. Hopefully this doesn't automatically make us go to orbit, but from how this gameplay plays, it looks like the case. Hopefully we can make that choice when we enter the ship and go to the cockpit to stay on the planet and offload some gear. The ship takes off to space. Once in orbit above the planet, we can walk about our ship. The compass displays lots of dots. This could be planets in the close area or point of interest on the ship. The arrow is still there, so I'm not sure what that is pointing to. We get some beautiful shots of the interior. We then approach a crew member who is leaning over the navigation console displaying some information. The compass has changed again. It looks like you are still on the planet and not in orbit. So you can enter your ship on the planet without going into orbit. The player activates the console and we get a ton of information about the planet, like the scanner. We can see the planet name and the location of it. Parima 4C is a moon of Parima 4 in the Parima system. It's 44% surveyed. We also get additional info, such as the type of planet, which is rock. Gravity, temperature, atmosphere, magnetosphere, fauna, flora, and the water status, which is radioactive. We then see all resources available on the planet, which are H2.0, iron, argon, and chlorine. The rest of the resources look like chemical compounds apart from NE, which is neon, HNCN could be hydrogen cyanide, SiH3Cl could be trichlorosilane, and RCOC is totally unknown to me. The moon also has two traits, I'm not sure what this could be. Maybe it has something special resource it can produce a ton of, maybe? Or it does things to the player that need to be discovered. There are two places on the map, a civilian outpost and an industrial outpost. The mine the player discovered doesn't seem to be on the map unless this is the industrial outpost, but I don't think so. We can look at our missions, we can press Y to show me we can set a landing target, or head back into the system menu. The player sets a landing target and has the option to land on the planet. I believe this was shot before landing on the planet and visiting the abandoned mine. Also, it isn't a continual video, it's been cut and rearranged quite significantly. The player zooms out to the system menu. We can see there are six planets in this system. Each one has a few moons or just one. Fun fact, the name Parima, also known as Antivorta, was one of the Kamenai, or goddesses of prophecy. Perhaps this alludes to what we are doing here? Searching for a prophecy left by the ancient aliens. We can see we have surveyed 32% of this system, highlighting Parima 1. This planet is a barren planet with only two resources on it. It has unknown traits. The player scans over to Parima 3. This planet has much better signs of life, it has one trait on it. And the water is safe. There is also a quest on this planet to clear all dangerous creatures from caves. This planet has different resources on it too. I'm not going to Google them, as I'm sure I'll be added to some government watch list. The player then scans over to a moon, Perima 5A. There is no life, but plenty of resources. The player then zooms out to the galaxy map, where we get more information about the system we were just in. We see a bunch of science info, but what we would find useful is the number of planets, moons and outposts. Even though we saw that there are civilian outposts on a planet, the info pulling through is telling us there are no outposts. This could mean there isn't any player-built ones. We then see a bunch of systems and galaxies we could jump to. Vol 3, Crix, Lunara, Linnaeus, Olympus, Cheyenne, Narion, Alpha Centauri, Ptolemy, and Sol. Olympus in Greek mythology is the home of the greater gods. Perhaps we'd find some remains of the gods there. We can also see the factions that occupy that system. The Freestar Collective occupies Vol 3. It then cuts to the player in the cockpit setting up to jump to the system selected in the navigation console. The player arrives at Alpha Centauri Ptolemyan system although they bump into a faction patrolling that system. This faction scans their ship for contraband. We can see on the screen that we have reached the planet Jemison. We can see the ship's user interface displaying the ship's weapon types and systems. From left to right I believe we have lasers, ballistic weapons, missiles, then engine shields and the gravity drive. We can assign 14 points across the systems. This is a power assigning system. 
I imagine if you improve your ship, you will get more points to put across the weapon and ship systems. On the right, we can see the shield capacity. It is 33. We can fly in first or third person. Then we cut to the planet we just arrived at. It is a, like an Earth 2.0. We see that we can scan the planet, and there are many locations we can visit. The player then chooses to land at New Atlantis. The faction that resides here is the United Colonies, UC for short. The player lands and starts to look around the city. On the compass we can see many icons, probably points of interest in the city. Later we can see a quest marker on the compass. We see a shop called Mercantile, most likely you can shop or trade here. We see a building named Settled System News Network suggesting it's either a televised or radio broadcaster. It'll be great learning about things that are happening from listening to the radio or watching a screen. The voiceover says this is a place that has quests. I believe we see a class meeting here, or a meeting of some sort. We then see a war memorial. Clearly this place has history. This city looks lived in. Then we see a coffee shop with one person struggling to choose a flavour of coffee. We then get introduced to the Constellations faction. A watch grants us access to the building. We meet a selection of characters here. The faction is so secretive or quiet. People think of Constellations as a myth. They are dedicated explorers, and they wish to investigate the alien artifacts that are appearing or being discovered around the settled systems. The next scene shows us the artifacts coming together and floating around. The player character received visions when they first touched the artifact. First off, we have Sarah Morgan, an ex-soldier and adventurer. She is the constellation leader. Matteo the theologian, the believer in aliens. Noel the scientist. Walter the financer. Vlad, an ex-pirate. Sam Coe, former space cowboy. Barrett, with a charm that can woo a space monster out of its pants. Vasco, your trusty robot companion. He can also say your name. We then see shots of potential places to go and quests to complete. Alien structures can be seen defying gravity. Then it cuts to a communications array place, a woman and child at a grave site, and some truly bizarre looking creatures. Clearly some monsters are more intense than others. Then it cuts to Emil Pagliarulo discussing the factions. The United Colonies value order and law, as they regard themselves as the true children of Earth. The have a mining operation on Mars. They have a museum of some sort in New Atlantis. There is the Free Star Collective, they have a Wild West sort of style to them. You can see a tavern, and creatures that have been stuffed and mounted on pedestals. We get a shot of two people doing a duel at sunrise. After that we get to see Neon, a pleasure city. Almost like a drug lord's underworld. We know what to expect there. We then get introduced to an enemy faction who worship a great serpent. They even speak like a snake. This is very odd. Then there is something called the Red Mile. This might be a faction dedicated to smuggling, maybe. Then there's the Crimson Fleet, a bunch of space pirates. We then get more shots of different planets and armors. Character creation is an important part of a Bethesda game, and here it looks amazing. We awaken from touching the artifact and receiving a vision. We meet two characters who talk to us about what happened to us. They work for Argos Extractors. We then see the character creation screen. We have the personnel record screen where we get to choose what we look like. Then we have the body section, where we can choose what our body looks like. It can range from muscular to thin to heavy. We can change between body types as well as select which walk animations we have. We can also adjust our skin tone here. The in the face section, we can change our skin tone, head shape, hair, and the color facial hair and the color, as well as change our nose, ears, cheeks, mouth, teeth, eyes, eye colour, chin, neck, eyebrows, character jewellery, dermesthetic, and scars. There's probably more you can change, but I didn't get to see it all. We then move on to the background. The first background we see is the explorer. They say exploration is a lost art. You didn't listen. As the major factions argued over the space they desperately tried to control, you were busy uncovering the wonders of the settled system. Starting skills are lasers. Personal laser weapons are in widespread use across the stelled systems, and specialised training can greatly increase their effectiveness. Astrodynamics. Advanced technologies are one thing, but it takes skill, patience and a little bit of love to coax even more capability out of a ship's grav drive. 
Surveying, humanity now has access to untold alien worlds, and the ability to decipher all that data while on the ground has become an essential skill set. We move on to the diplomat background. The wars are over. Peace now reigns the settled system. Only because there are those quietly fighting to keep it. Because of you, agreements were signed, words were heeded, and lives were spared. Skills consist of persuasion, commerce, and wellness. Next, we get the cyberneticist. Likes to think humans and machines should become one. Main skills are medicine, security, basically lockpicking, and lasers. The cyber runner sounds like the stealth class, working for or against mega corporations and sacrificing conscience for credits. Starting skills are stealth, security, and theft. Combat medic. Take care of your friends in combat. Starting skills are pistol certification, medicine, and wellness. And finally, chef, you're a master chef. Skills consist of gastronomy, dueling, and scavenging. Depending on our background, it will affect how characters react to us, as well as open quests and dialogue for us. There are three traits you can have. The traits are as following. Alien DNA, dream home, empath, extrovert, freestar collective settler, hero worshipped, introvert, kid stuff, neon street rat, raised enlightened, raised universal, wanted, serpents embrace, spaced, taskmaster, terra firma, and united colonies native. Each trait has a unique experience associated with it. Hero worship makes the adoring fans spawn and follow you around. These traits change up how you play the game. You can add the adoring fan to your ship. He'll give you gifts, but he is annoying. Each one of them can be removed, so you aren't stuck with them. The kid stuff adds your parents to the game, which is cool. Serpent's Embrace makes some hostiles neutral towards you, getting you out of space fights. The Wanted trait makes bounty hunters come after you. We then get some amazing character shots, showcasing what we can look like as we go on our adventures. When leveling up, we get a skill point, which we can use to unlock new skills. There are five skill trees we can see. Physical, Social, Combat, Science, and Tech. There is higher tiers of skills that can be unlocked as you spend more points in a tree. Each skill can be leveled by using it. The skill ranks up, adding a bonus to that skill. We see multiple skills, but I don't want to spoil them here, so let's move on to a particular skill called Xenosociology. This allows you to pacify, flee frenzy, or control bug-like creatures. I won't be taking this as I despise large mutated bugs. We then see the boost pack training, which allows more proficiency in the backpack department. Neuro Strikes makes your melee pack a punch. While striking someone, we see a lootable box appear. I noticed a weapon that seems to have a unique icon on it. The Anti-Personnel Calibrated Solstice. We see there are multiple ways of getting through things, such as stealth, talking, or guns blazing. Here I noticed that the experience rewards weren't appearing on the screen. Hopefully we can disable the option for it appearing all the time. Or this was a max level character. We then see fast shots of combat. Slowing them down, you can see the player using some cool guns to eliminate foes. Using mines too. We also see a flash of a debuff. I saw joint pain appear on the compass. This is most likely a debuff that occurs when you do something or get injured. We then cut to a lot of scenic shots, showcasing the amazing lighting in this game. We see another icon in a triangle. This time it is blue, so maybe a positive buff. We see more shots that look incredible, with the odd interesting structures in it. Space combat is up next and it looks very intense. We can see the shields are gone and the hull has taken damage. We can see red parts on our ship's dashboard located on engine, shield and grav drive, which tells me that these parts of the ship have been damaged. The player looks like they are trying to lock on missiles or lasers, as there is an icon saying locking. The ship they are facing is a Crimson Fleet Spectre. I also see that we can press buttons to gain speed and boost. After this there are more space shots which are stunning. Next up we can see the different types of ships we can take command in. I love how each dashboard changes with each different style of ship. I love the variety. We then see the ship system. At the top left we can see the ship systems. As we scroll down, 
we can see that the Celestial 2 has 31 points you can allocate to systems. It also is a little damaged. We can see the ship overview. It shows the fuel, hull health, and cargo capacity. It also shows us the overall stats of the ship, so it shows the reactor, the amount of crew it can hold, the jump distance, the shields, and the weapons. Also it shows if it is registered or not. This one isn't so, there may be some gameplay challenges associated with this. At the top we can see the ship name, to the right of that we can see the vendor credits and our credits, at the bottom right we can inspect, sell purchase or exit from the vendor. PAR stands for Particle Beam Weaponry. Each ship is unique, some have low points, and some have sky high points making them easy to manage. This is very cool to see. You can talk to an NPC that will sell and buy ships from you. I believe you can talk to them to also modify your ship and buy parts. You can add extra parts to your ship, as you can see here adding an extra cargo hold increases your cargo space. At the bottom you can see your ship stats, showing laser damage, ballistic damage, hull health, shields, cargo capacity, max crew, jump range, mobility, top speed and mass. You can also add more landing bays. Pretty cool. We get a few more shots of ships, then we approach an NPC, we get options to repair the ship, modify it, buy and sell ships, then we can ask him a few questions. We then get a lovely image of what can be modified, so starting at the top we have the cooling system, then the shield generator, then the docker, fuel tanks, grav drive, weapons, habitat, engines, cockpit, cargo, reactor, bay, and landing gears. I think there are more things that we can add. We then see the modification screen, we can select a part of our ship, then see what we or the vendor has available for us. We can add parts and move around existing ones. We have some options at the bottom saying we can undo, redo, choose the colour, select all, select a particular part, delete a part, edit then flight check. Flight check's eye image is to test the ship to see if all parts are working. You can really edit the ship a lot, from adding parts purely to change the shape of the ship's silhouette. You can add useful systems to your ship such as a crafting table, armour and weapon racks and more. You can really make this ship your home and your own. It's fantastic to see. From there we are told we can develop relationships with characters we meet, as well as each companion has a particular set of skills that can come in handy on your ship. Sarah Morgan has the skills of astrodynamics, lasers, leadership and botany. Sam Coe has piloting, rifle certification, payloads and geology. Barrett has starship engineering, particle beam weapon systems, robotics and gastronomy. Other companions can be sent to outposts or added to your ship's crew. We then see more points of interest, places we can pick up crew members such as the viewport or Madame Sauvage's place. Each of these crew members have their own unique skills such as Marika Boros having the skill set of shotgun certification ballistics and particle beam weapon systems or Hella that has geology and outpost engineering. All can be assigned to places through a nice tidy menu. On the left we have names, then the assignment, followed by their skill. We can press A to assign them somewhere. We can see the name of the place where constellations are based. It's named the Lodge, which is cool. We can also see a mini security bot is assigned to Jemison Outpost 1. And unfortunately Barrett is assigned to a Crimson Fleet Outpost his only kryptonite. From there it goes on to talk about Vasco, the robot, and that crew members can come along with you in the field. It then goes into detail about the ships and how that system works. We've already discussed most of this earlier, but basically you assign points into the ship systems you want. So if you need speed, you take points from shields or the grav drive, and you get faster. It's a very situational system. There is a specific perk called the targeting control system, this allows you to target certain parts of the ship, you can destroy the ship and collect its cargo, or you can disable it and board it, kill the occupants, then claim the ship for your own. Fun stuff. It then goes on to say there are massive star yards you can dock and explore. Massive ships you can dock at and explore too. There will be missions and vendor galore. You can dock with warships or ultra-rich society ships. There is one called the UC Vigilance or visit the Terran Preservation Society. It then goes on to say you can hail any ship you come across, trading with them or just straight up robbing them. We see more footage of a developer boarding a ship and hoarding sandwiches. Truly compelling. 
After that, we see one of the best transitions in the direct. We get a taste of some encounters, such as a nice grandma offering us some food. A ship you are in losing, it's gravity. Meeting with a colonist ship lost in space, thinking it's the last bastion of humanity to monster infected ships. Also, it looks like you can join up with ships to head off to a mission somewhere. We then see more planets we can explore. Then we get to see a big space battle, as we are bombarded with laser fire, this looks cool. We see more shots of space and planets. We see ships taking off in front of the player, as well as ships coming down. Then it shows us the scanning feature we can use to get our resources before we head down to the surface, or whilst we are on the surface. It highlights each element on the planet. From there, Jean-Francois Levesque explains to us how the worlds work. These are planets that aren't handcrafted, but there definitely are handcrafted ones. As you approach a planet, the terrain is generated. Then a system in the game adds locations to the planet, as well as fauna and flora. It looks like it also generates different radiant quests too, such as kill this or go and collect this from here. Each planet generated will be unique to that playthrough and player, which is crazy. A different experience for everyone. We then see a walkthrough of the player discovering an abandoned robot factory. They activate the door and load into an area. We see some smooth gunplay and discover this place is overrun with pirates. The player eliminates them. We come across a legendary spec helmet that has its own traits. The full name of the helmet is Incendiary Calibrated Deep Mining Space Helmet. The traits are Technician, minus 15 damage from robots, Hacker, plus two max auto attempts that can be banked while hacking, and Incendiary, 10% chance to ignite nearby attackers. This is interesting to see and makes me think there is armor modding in the game, but there may not be, to allow these legendary items to spawn in the world. I'm hoping they shine more as unique items. Then it cuts to more shots of the player exploring. I'm happy to see holstered weapons are back. They talk about the scanner again, saying you can figure out what resources are generated by the fauna and flora, then create an outpost to harvest them. You gain experience from scanning everything on a planet as well as scanning an entire system. We see a ton of shots of creatures and lighting. We then get a look at the building mode, we place a beacon. We can see what resources are available here. We then get to building, we see at the bottom of the screen, the amount of cargo, crew, power need, total power and the production per minute. There are habitat modules that have a range of uses. You can also make yourself a nice home. There is a building limit like Fallout 4. Hopefully the limit is higher. You can assign companions and crew members to it. You get added bonuses if you do this. You build extractors to harvest materials from this planet. We get to see the structures you can build in their new flycam perspective. You can create an outpost airlock, four wall hab, a hydroponic hab A, a small science hab, a military hab, a round hab, a small hex hab, a hallway, and a watchtower. We can see some have an icon saying one of two. You can switch between habs to find the best one for your outpost. We then are told we can go in and make it our own. I'm assuming this means we'll be able to add furniture and items as well as crafting stations. We then get a lot of shots of outposts. We then get introduced to a research laboratory. I totally missed this when I first watched this direct. I thought this was a place where you just mod your weapons, not a place where you can generate mods for weapons as well as meds, food and drink, outpost developments and equipment. This research station uses materials to generate these things. We then see the proper weapon modding screen. We can change the receiver, internals, optics, magazine and battery and muzzle. We can mod our weapons to have explosive rounds and silencers. We then get to see a range of melee weapons, from an axe to a dagger. We then see a bunch of different weapons being used, which look incredible. Also, we can use the environment to our advantage, freezing enemies by shooting barrels of nitrogen. We see a skill level up, the skill is heavy weapon certification. We see more weapons that look incredible, here look. We then see more debuff icons, I believe. We see the player using jetpacks as well as another skill leveling, which is particle beams. This means that the weapon used by the player is a particle beam type weapon. 
so this isn't exclusive to your ship. There are handheld versions. Then we learn firing a ballistic weapon in zero G will push you back. So changing to lasers or particle beam weapons would be a good idea. Mag weapons look fun to use. We see a quadruped robot, which is interesting. As well as diverse creatures, we will be getting diverse robots. Just what I need. We then see more shots of unique weapons being fired, as well as some amazing looking armor. After all these amazing shots of fighting, we can see on the compass these battles take place over many different places, including space locations such as the Nova Galactic Star Yard, retrofitted star station. Once those fast shots are done, we get the player character using a power to disable gravity, as well as five enemies. That is crazy. We then see a few more shots of space and places, as well as a photo mode being used. And finally, we see the portal open once we've collected all the fragments of the artifacts. I imagine after that we find who made that portal. We also see some sort of creature looking out at a massive gas giant. Perhaps it is the player wearing the hide of a creature. I reckon this is a part of a quest where we can hoax an alien encounter. We'll see. We see more creatures and it honestly gets me pumped to play this game. That is all I could see when taking a slow look at the Starfield Direct Showcase. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. I hope this has gotten you ready to explore Starfield, as well as introduced you to some of the menus and mechanics of the game that you may have overlooked. Thank you for watching. Take care.